Now I'm going to go over how to create a multi-phase system uh, with Lagoa. So far we've been really focusing on particle systems and emissions that deal with one type of emission to create a fluid like water or whatever it is. And uh, in Lagoa we have the ability to create uh, multi-phases for our emissions. So you could create an emission that has five or six different phases. So you can have liquid water mixing with milk, mixing with mud and dirt and all kinds of crazy stuff. Basically whatever you can come up with and think of. Okay. So to do this uh, it takes a little bit more management in terms of what nodes go where and how many nodes you're going to need in your ice trees. But it's actually not that big of a deal once you understand how everything goes plugged in. Uh, it's pretty straightforward from there. So let's open up an example scene here. I'm going to open up uh, example 5 multi-phase Lagoa system. And it's a pretty simple uh, scene here. If I render this out, you see we have like this bowl here with a white background and stuff. And we have these two nulls, which I'm going to use both of them both uh, to emit particles. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to go to the Create menu. I'm going to create a volume emission. And I'll just pick the null on the left over here. Don't pick the other one. Uh, go ahead and pick the bowl, cereal bowl down here as the collider. That's basically what we're going to have to do at first. And then we're going to set everything up manually. Uh, and it won't be that bad. Okay, so here's my ice tree, just like you would expect uh, usually. Here's my a, emit grid node. If I go ahead and hit play, I'm going to get my particles are created. They drop down. And as you would expect, when they hit the bottom of the bowl, they're going to just kind of splash down there, just like you would expect. All right, so let's make some uh, changes to this. Let me take the emit node here. I'm going to switch resolution to maybe 0.3, hex, play at every frame, and all this other stuff looks pretty good. I'm going to go to the add forces and remove the uh, air density there. I'm going to come over here to Lagoa, and I'm going to get myself a air density node over here, plug it into the force one, organize this a little bit better. I'm going to take the main material and I'm going to get rid of it. I'm going to go to my material types. I'm going to get myself a liquid water material. I'll plug it into the phase node over here to the execute one port. I can adjust the water however I like, but I'm going to leave it alone for now. I'm going to go to the multi physics over here. I'm going to turn off stuff I don't need. So I'm turning off the custom elastic range, plastic flow, viscosity, inelastics, and elastics. Close that. Okay. So right now, if I hit play, we basically have a, an emitter shooting out these particles, dropping them into our bowl, as you can see. What I want to do is I want to create a multi-phase system where this other null over here can also create particles that interact with the particles coming from the first one. And the particles can be different. In other words, it can have a totally different material. So first, the blue particles can be, say, liquid water. Then I can emit other particles from here that represent something else, like mud or uh, chocolate fudge, or jello, or basically whatever I want. Okay, so to do that, you have to follow a couple of rules here, okay? Every emitter, basically every object that's going to create and shoot particles in your scene, that's part of this same Lagoa system that's going to interact with itself, uh, is going to need to have its own emit grid node, or emission node, and it's going to have to have its own Lagoa phase node, and it's going to have to have its own Lagoa material node. So those three nodes, you have to create individual nodes for each particle emission inside of your Lagoa, you know, simulation system, if you want to call it that. Okay. So right now we have a system set up for one type of particles. What we need to do is create another one for a second type of particles. So what I'll do is pretty simple. Let me move this stuff up. I'm going to take the Lagoa emit grid node here. I'm going to hit Control C to copy, Control V to paste, and this is going to be the one for the second one. I'm also going to need to get the second emitter. So I know the second emitter is called emitter 2, so I'll drag and drop it from the Explorer view into the ICE view over here. I'm going to plug in the out name into the emit grid node, the new one I made. Plug it into the null in name. Move this over. What I need to do is pipe this into the simulation root compound. To do that, I'm going to need an execute node, so I'll go grab an execute node. That little search field up there comes in very, very handy. I'm going to take the first one here on the top and I'm going to plug it into the execute nodes port 1. And then I'm going to take the second emit grid node that I 
copied and pasted. And I'm going to plug this into a new port, which is going to be port 2. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this execute node. I'm going to take its execute port, plug this into the emitter port in the simulation root compound. Okay, with that done, what I'm going to do next is I need to make sure that I also create individual Lagoa phase and individual Lagoa material nodes for this new emission that I created over here. And if I hit play right now, I'm going to get particles from both nulls. And they're both going to fall into the bowl, and they're both going to land inside this bowl, and you can actually see the particles interact with each other. So the particles on the left and the particles on the right are bumping into each other, they're mixing in with each other and stuff like that. Kind of like what you would expect if you took two bags of marbles and just poured them into a bowl like this in real life. The marbles would, you know, mix in with each other and stuff like that. Uh, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take this Lagoa phase. Let me just organize this a little bit better. I'm going to take the Lagoa phase, copy and paste with Control C, Control V, and what I need is another uh, Lagoa material. So let me go back here to my uh, preset manager over here. I'll go to material types. Now there's lots of materials that we can choose from. You can go with like a foam or a dirt pile, whatever you want. I'm just going to grab another liquid water material. But feel free to experiment and try out different materials to see what kind of effects you can come up with. So I'm going to plug this into the execute one port of the logo phase. And then I'm going to take the logo phase, I'm going to take its execute port, plug that into a new execute one over here. So it's going to be execute two. I'll take this new material liquid water and I'm going to change the color to like a yellow. If you wanted to, you could change the behavior of this liquid water material. So change the surface tension, uh, the pressure settings, stuff like that if you wanted to. I'm going to leave it at the default. Okay. Now if I hit play, you're going to notice that all the particles are now yellow. So this still is not behaving uh, correctly. So in order to get this stuff to work correctly, what you need to do is you need to set up unique uh, phase ID numbers. Okay, that's very important or else the system will not work as expected. So if I go to the Lagoa Emit Grid node and I open it up and I look at the bottom here under the simulator settings, you're going to notice that there's a phase ID number over here. Right now it's set to zero by default. The way this works is for every different material that you're doing inside of your Lagoa simulation, you want to make sure that each emission has its own ID number for the phase. Okay? So uh, this one right now has a phase ID number of zero. So what I want to do is make sure that the emit grid node is set to zero and the Lagoa phase over here is also set to zero. Now I'm going to go to the second emit grid node that I copied and pasted earlier. You're going to notice that, uh-oh, its phase is set to zero. That's not good. So I'm going to set it to one. Then I'm going to go to the Lagoa phase node over here that belongs to it. And I need to set the phase ID over here also to one. So now if I go back and play this again, now I get blue particles on the left and these yellow particles on the right. And when they land inside the bowl, you can see that they're actually interacting with each other, bumping into each other and mixing in together uh, as you would expect. See that? Looks pretty cool. One thing that I like to do, and I recommend you do this, is to organize this a little bit better in Ice Tree so that when you look at it, or say, for example, you're working in, on a team project, a team member can look at this and quickly know what's what. So what I like to do is maybe take these guys over here, and I'll go over here and I'll do a search for uh, comment. So I'll grab myself a group comment node. And these group comment nodes are actually extremely useful. So I'll just resize it. I'll double click up here and change the title color to say like a bluish color. And the background, change that also to a bluish color. So I know these are the blue particles. So just by color coding things visually, I can see things and understand what's what. Uh, I'm also going to take its material and its phase node. I'm going to put it up here so that it all fits nicely in here and it makes a lot more sense. See that? And I'll grab another group comment node and I'm going to do the same thing for, uh, for this other stuff. So I'll change the color here for the title to a yellow which obviously makes sense. I'll take the background, change that to a yellowish color as well. And I'm just going to resize this stuff, put it up here, move that stuff out of the way. Take the Lagoa phase with the material, put it up there where it belongs. And uh, that's pretty much it. 
this will help to organize things because when you start working in ICE, you can have a lot of nodes and a lot of these little connection curves and stuff going all over the place. And that can get a little bit confusing, especially if you hand this scene over to another project team member in your studio or whatnot. You could end up running into some serious issues where someone could look at this and go, you know, what in the world does all this stuff mean? So this really helps out. So there we go. That's a multi-phase system. If you wanted to have a third particle emission or a fourth or a fifth or a sixth or whatever, you would do the same thing. Create more of these emission nodes, create individual unique phase nodes with individual unique material nodes for each emission, and just plug them into this execute node over here, have that plugged into the simulation root node, etc., etc. I think you get the idea. So it's pretty straightforward. It's a lot of stuff to manage, but once you get it down, it is straightforward. So finally, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take the point cloud. Let me rename that real quick. I'm going to call this serial point cloud, I guess, or whatever you want to call it. And I'm going to go to the simulation menu, and I'm going to save cache on selection. And I'm going to end this video here, and in the next one, I'm going to wrap this up.